Alright, today we're going to be creating a very simple bot for RuneScape using Autoit. should be about 30 lines of code. The first thing you need to do, if you haven't done so already, is download Autoit. The link will be in the description. Once you've done that, come over here on your desktop and create a new Autoit v3 script. I'm going to go ahead and call it RuneBot. doesn't really matter what you call it. Click Edit Script there, and it'll open this editor. Delete all that. We don't need it. Alright. The first thing we want to do for this program is define the variables that we're going to use. So, we're going to use color because we're going to use the color of the monster to find its position and attack it. Um, and we're going to use an interval. And this interval is going to be the interval time between attacks so that instead of just attacking, 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 attacking all at once, it attacks, gives your character time to kill it, and then it attacks the next thing so you don't get bogged down uh, inefficiently and end up either dying or not killing it. So um, in AutoIt, all variables are defined with this cache symbol beforehand, and we put global in there so that they can run in different functions. That means that they can run in places that they haven't been defined. So it'll just run anywhere throughout the rest of our program. All right, so we have our variables defined, and actually we're going to set some hotkeys up here too the hotkey set command for that. Uh, the first one we're going to do is we're going to bind the escape key to exit our program and we're going to do that with a function called terminate. Alright, um, so what this command does, hotkey set, which means what it ends up doing is that every time the user presses escape here, it'll call this function terminate. Now there is no function terminate here, so we're going to have to go ahead and define it. And for that we use func terminate and then put the end func here and the function goes right here in between the func and the end func and for terminate it's going to be very simple we're just going to type exit 1 that means it'll exit with code 1 so every time somebody presses escape it will run this piece of code so it will exit the program all right the second function we're going to use is uh, get color so we're going to write a function to get the color after setting a hotkey. So we'll say alt c. In AutoIt, alt is denoted by an exclamation mark. So exclamation mark c, same thing as alt c. So whenever anybody presses alt c, it'll run this function that we put in here. So we'll name the function get color. And then let's write that function. So under terminate, func get color. The way we're going to do this is it's going to get the color of whatever monster is currently under the cursor. So first we need to get the cursor position. We'll create a variable called point to store the x and y coordinates of the cursor. Then we'll get those coordinates and assign them to point with the mouse get position or mouse get pose command. So now that point is going to have the mouse position in it. And then we get the color by saying uh, pixel get color of the x and y coordinates of the mouse, which we already have over here in point. So the x coordinate is just going to be point and then in brackets 0, and the y coordinates point and with a 1 in the brackets. This should get you the color of whatever is under the cursor, and we'll just go and add a message box msgbox to notify the user that you've selected color flag will be zero. That just means it'll be a message box with an OK button. Title, color set, and then the text that is actually displayed is going to say the color has been set to, and then we're going to add in the color there, color. This little and sign here uh, puts the color into this string that's being shown. So the color will show up in there. All right that's it for the second function. Now the third function, the actual attacking. So we're going to set another hotkey with the hotkey set command. We're going to make this one alt, remember with an exclamation mark, and then A for attack. And it's basically just going to be a loop that attacks things over and over again, so you don't have to do it. We call that attack loop. And let's go ahead and write that function. So func attack loop, just like last time, and then 
end of a function here, which means everything between foc and end foc, right in here, is going to be the code that is run when we press alt a to trigger the attack loop. So let's start with a message box notifying that the bot has actually started. This is the main part of the bot right here. This is what will actually make your character move around and attack things. So flag zero again for just a message box and OK. And then the title, attacking, and text, starting to attack. All right, that should be good there. Now we start our attack loop. So we say while one, which basically means while one is true. Now one will always equal one. So one will always be true. So this will run until we terminate it by pressing escape. And then we end with w e n d. We end that while loop. So anything in here is just going to be looped forever. So what we're going to do is we're going to get we're going to search through the entire window to find a point an x y coordinate with the same color that we defined up here. So we're going to say point, we're going to store that value in point, and we're going to say pixel pixel search, so it's going to search for a color within these left, top, right, bottom coordinates. Now, how do we find these coordinates? Luckily, AutoIt comes with a great tool called the AutoIt Window Info, um, and it will show you the position and color of the coordinates of your position with your cursor. So it starts out frozen, press Control alt f to unfreeze it, and then as you see, it'll show the color and position. Now let's open RuneScape. Alright, RuneScape is open now, as you can see. So, we're going to get the point of somewhere up here to define the edges of our window. So we're going to have a window from up here down to about over here. So, uh, let's check. Point up here, press Control alt f to freeze again, and double click to copy these coordinates and we'll put them right in here with control V, add another comma for the other coordinates and unfreeze with control alt F and our other coordinates should be let's say down in here where the cursor is right now double click to copy those again paste them back in and remember we're searching for that same color that we defined up above so we define it here we set a value to it here and now we're using it to search right here. So what happens with this command is that within that window, which is roughly here to down here, don't need this anymore, so it's from here to down here, it's going to search every pixel in there, and any pixel that matches this color that we set earlier is going to have its coordinates stored in this value point. But it's only going to store it in point if it finds that color, in other words, if the monster is present. So we want to make sure that the monster actually is present before we do anything, so we're going to use the if is array command on point. That basically just means if point has values stored in it, then we do the next thing, which turns out to be a left mouse click. We're going to use the mouse click command button left. X and Y coordinates will be point zero for X and point one for Y. Okay, so now it clicks. Um, and it needs to pause, or using the sleep command, for the interval of time that we set up here. We do this so that it's not just click, 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 click on every monster, but it's click on a monster. It will attack, it'll give you some time to kill it, and then it will click on the next one. Uh, it's more efficient that way. Alright, and then we end the if statement right here so that it knows to only do these two things. If point exists, then it does these two things. And then we have it sleep just for, or pause, for another 50 milliseconds just to reduce CPU load while it's going through this while loop, while loop and not finding colors. So that should be about it for this function. Uh, just to review, what it'll do is it'll notify the user that it's starting, and then it'll go into this loop right here of this code until we terminate it. So what it's going to do is search for this point, uh, the point of the monster. And if it exists, it'll click on it, attack, and wait until it's dead, and then click again on the next one. If it doesn't exist, it'll wait 50 milliseconds and search again. So that's pretty much the whole function, the whole program. And now all we need to do is add another while loop. So this is the main loop of the program. And all it's going to do is wait. 
Okay, so as you can see, while one, so forever, or until we press terminate, escape, it's just going to sleep for 250 milliseconds. Basically, this is so that the program does nothing until we press one of these hotkeys, and then it'll do whatever the hotkey says. So uh, that's pretty good. All we should do is add a message box up here saying that it's starting and set the interval. So let's make the interval 10 seconds. 10, 1, 2, 3. And as you've no doubt noticed down here with this sleep command, it counts everything in milliseconds. So 10 seconds is 10,000, okay? Now that we've set the interval, we'll just add a message box up here to let the user know that it's starting. The flag will be zero, as always. Title, starting up, and we'll make it a message. Starting, use escape to quit, alt C to set color, and alt plus a to attack and control s to save all right now it's time to test it out let's tab well first of all press f5 to start it running it'll give you this notification press ok now it's just idling here tab over to runescape and let's select a monster here's the color let's set it with alt c there you go color set and then alt a to start the attack and look at that, it attacks all on its own. And now it's going to wait the interval to finish the attack. Keep attacking, keep attacking. You may want to set the interval longer or shorter. And then it goes ahead and attacks the next wizard. There you go. It's doing it all by itself. Um, don't know how to illustrate that really, but when you try it, you'll see. Yep, attacking, and it's waiting the interval. Attacking. Now, as you can see, unless you set the color correctly, for instance, if you set the color as green, it would click on everything that's green. So you've got to make sure it's something specific to the monster. Like on these guys, I take their brown belts right here. Oh, found that one too. Or something about them that's not in the environment. And as you can see, it actually works quite well. Thanks very much for watching.